Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, in today's video, I'll be taking you through the process of this acrylic ink painting and sharing my thoughts on how ink varies from using watercolors. But before we dive into the video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. As you may know, I consider myself to be an illustrator and content creator. The most efficient way to showcase this is through a portfolio and Squarespace is an incredibly versatile platform that allows me to do that. Here you can see me quickly adding new videos to my About Me page, which updates instantly as you edit it, and the templates automatically adjust for mobile viewing as well, which is really important since so many people spend their time browsing on their phones. And the editing functions are so straightforward to use and adding these videos only took moments to do. So if you are interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, and now on to the rest of the video. So for those of you who are familiar with my work, you'll know that I generally like to do my sketches digitally and then I transfer it onto the watercolor paper using a light pad. Usually I do the first pass of the sketch using an erasable color pencil just in case I make a mistake. And then after that, I go for a second pass with a Faber-Castell polychromos color pencil. And the reason why I use this particular color pencil is because it is oil-based and because of that, it is water resistant so it will stay in place once I start painting over it. I usually try to pick a color that will complement the rest of the painting. So in this case, I knew that the painting was going to be a fairly warm, neutral color palette. So I used this burgundy color pencil for the sketch. And that way, if the sketch lines are peeking through, it still complements the rest of the illustration. So as I mentioned earlier, for today's painting, I will be primarily using acrylic inks, and then I'm using my favorite ceramic palette and some synthetic paintbrushes. As always, all of the art supplies used will be listed in the description. So here I decided I would start out by adding in some of the darkest shadows on the face and figure, which was a mixture of a warm brown ink mixed in with a little bit of violet ink that is diluted with some water. And then after that, I decided to cover the surface of her hat with some clean water first before adding in the ink. And the reason why I wet the paper first was because I wanted to create a diffu diffuse blooming effect with the different shades of brown. And in painting terms, this is called a wet on wet technique. And weirdly, painting the hat was maybe one of my favorite parts. I think that it's just very satisfying to watch the paint move and react with one another. And in these moments, I can sort of just turn my brain off and just paint for just the, the kind of visual element. I'm not having to think about shading or blending or anything like that. So I really enjoy painting these little like areas where there's no actual shading involved. <laughs> So one of the reasons why I chose to use acrylic inks for this illustration instead of watercolor was because I knew I wanted her top to be a sheer fabric. And I find that using an acrylic ink is much easier to achieve this effect than it would be by using watercolors. And while a lot of the techniques and overall appearance of using acrylic inks are very similar to watercolors, the main difference is that when acrylic ink dries, it is totally permanent. Whereas with watercolors, it is always going to be water soluble, even if the paint has dried. So there are definitely pros and cons with either one of the mediums, but in the case of the way I like to paint the sheer fabric, acrylic ink was definitely the way to go. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I made a drawing prompt list called Witch Familiars. And in that list, I have a variety of different animals that I want to illustrate with their witch companions. Of course, my original intention was to create all of these illustrations for the month of October, but unfortunately that is no longer going to be the case since we are almost done with October and this is only my second illustration. But you know what? I told myself that I can still complete this drawing challenge during the month of November as well. Nobody is stopping me from, you know, only having October to do this illustration series. So look out for the rest of them on my Instagram page. 
But anyways, the illustration for this prompt, of course, was Snake. And the main inspiration for this piece actually came from this really beautiful collection of lingerie from the brand Thistle Inspire that I came across recently. And so for this portrait, I used one of their Medusa bodysuit designs as the closing for the clothing for this witch character. Whenever I think of snakes, my initial thought is always to go for green. However, since I have already done quite a few illustrations in the past where I was featuring snakes that had a green forward colored palette, I decided to take it a different route and go for a warmer color palette, color palette this time. And this led me to include a boa constrictor for the snake. And then from there, that helped inform me where I wanted to take the rest of the color palette for this piece. And so as you can see here, I'm doing flat washes of color for the remaining elements of the illustration where I diluted the ink with quite a bit of water so that the layer is quite light. My main tip for getting even washes is that you have to work fairly quickly and where you can try and work in sections. And the reason for that is because you don't want any of the edges to dry as you're moving through an area because if any of the edges dry, that's when you end up with patches. So it is good to be mindful that you don't use too small of a brush that it can't hold enough paint at a time, but not too large of a brush that it won't allow you to get into the small detailed areas. So that's why I really like this Craftimo synthetic paintbrush because it comes to like a fairly good sharp point, but is kind of robust enough to hold a fair amount of water and ink at a time. And with both watercolors and inks, I generally like to build up the color and shading through many thin glazes. With acrylic ink, it is especially important to be aware of the strength of your color mixes because unlike watercolor, after the paint has been laid down and has dried, you cannot lift the color back up. And so you can see throughout the process here that especially in these early stages, I keep the mixtures quite diluted with water and the, the initial layers are quite light because I didn't want to go in too dark, too fast in these uh, areas of the snake, hair and skin so that I had room to continue to build up the shading. One of my favorite things about working with acrylic inks is the blending. Here you can see I can lay down the pink ink as a big blob essentially, and then using a clean wet brush, I buff out the edges of said ink blob to create a soft diffused effect. This is definitely a te technique that you can use with watercolors as well but you often run the risk of disturbing the layers of paint underneath if you buff too vigorously. And another thing about watercolors is that certain colors or certain types of paper will lift more easily than others. Whereas with acrylic inks, it will never lift no matter the color or paper so long as the previous layer is dry. And so that's why going into this illustration when I knew that I was gonna have her top to be a sheer fabric, I figured I would use acrylic inks because that makes the shading process so much easier knowing that that like transparent sheer fabric I can lay down and then just continue to shade on top of it over and over and over again without the that fabric quote unquote like fabric layer um, budging at all whereas with watercolors I would have to be much more careful about the way that I approached it and pretty likely would end up with really patchy areas and things like that because of the fact that it's water soluble. And yeah, here you can see now I'm moving on to the shading element of the skin and I'm pretty much doing the exact same technique as I did for kind of the blush warmer areas of her skin. So I'm just adding in a blob of brown ink 
and then cleaning off my brush. And while it's still wet or damp with the clean water, I just buff out the edges. And that's how I approach all of the kind of shading elements of using acrylic inks. And another thing that I thought about doing for this illustration but didn't end up doing um, but I have done in the past is that I will use acrylic inks in the way that you're seeing here and then sometimes depending on what color I want I will use watercolors as like the last few layers and glaze it on top of the inks and um, that's a nice option too if you happen to have both of the mediums but um, for this case the color palette was so uh, limited. I didn't ne necessarily need to bring in watercolors, but in some cases where I wanted to use a particular color in the illustration and I had it in a watercolor but didn't have it in an ink, I will combine the two. And so that's an, a great option too if you are wanting the this like shading kind of technique option, but have way more watercolors in your repertoire, you can definitely mix the two together as well. And maybe I'll do an illustration like that in the future so that you can fully see what I mean. But yeah, I definitely own way more watercolors than I do inks. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you already have watercolors, but are interested in trying out this technique, maybe just buy one or two acrylic inks of colors that you think you'll want for shading options and then go from there. And when I say mix, I mean using watercolors on top of the acrylic inks as a separate layer, not actually mixing the two paints directly because I'm not sure if that would go very well. Then while I let the character's skin paint layer dry, I moved on to painting the skin of the snake. And for the snake, obviously, if you are familiar with a boa constrictor, you'll know that they have a very distinct pattern on their skin. And so for this, I knew that I could go in with a fairly, you know, medium tone brown for that pattern. And then again, because of the benefits of using acrylic ink, I was able to do the shading on top afterwards without having to worry about the pattern getting messed up in any way. I felt like I wanted to do the pattern first, or at least a, a first pass of the pattern first, because uh, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I did lightly sketch it out, the, the pattern anyway. And so I figured I would just paint in the pattern first so that I didn't lose the kind of sketch that I had done underneath. And yeah, technically boa constrictors are typically a like cream and brown color, but because of the fact that I went for a very kind of warm or like pinky purpley brown for the rest of this illustration, I figured I would also kind of bring that into the color palette of the boa constrictor. So as you can see, I added a lot of pink to the boa constrictor, which technically, you know, they're not pink, but for this illustration, I thought that I would do that. And I think it looks very cute. And for those of you who are familiar with my work, I love pink. So at any given opportunity, I'm going to add pink in. And I think that uh, a slightly pink bow constrictor is pretty freaking cute. <laughs> And then from here on out, I'm basically just using the same techniques that I have shown and talked about um, throughout this video, just continuing to build up the layers and the colors of this piece going over and over um, the different areas. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, I like to jump from element to element to allow time for the areas to dry in between layers. And that way I'm not overworking the paper because while I am using 100% cotton watercolor paper, it, um, you still don't want to be too rough on the paper's surface. Otherwise you can ruin the illustration if you're going in a little bit too quickly. And if you're impatient, you can also use a hairdryer or blow dryer to speed up the drying time as well. But yeah, I, I will, um, talk about I guess a little bit about more on the inspiration side of this so like I mentioned before the top is kind of was the driving force of the inspiration and from the thistle and spire lingerie line and 
for the pose, I get a lot of questions about how to use reference photos and how often I use reference photos. And for this illustration, while it is fairly simple and straightforward, I did actually, I kind of had the pose in mind and then I very quickly sketched it out. And then just to like get the logistics and the details of it, I actually quickly stood in front of a mirror with this pose. And I actually had a little mirror next to me while I was sketching it for the hand, especially because hands, I'm sure you can all relate to are very difficult and complicated to draw. And so for the hand, I definitely just like posed my own hand in front of the mirror as a reference point for the, the sketch. And then for the snake, I just looked up, you know, I just Googled a bunch of different photos of boa constrictors. And while I didn't look at any photos of a boa constrictor wrapped around a person, I did look at a bunch of different pictures of these snakes wrapped around branches and things like that. And then just sort of, you know, made it up in terms of how it would wrap around this figure. And the, th the nice thing about the way that I did this illustration is that there is it's kind of a bust and so we don't actually have to see the rest of her torso we don't have to see where the end of the bow constrictor is i think that's kind of the beauty of illustration and, and painting is that nothing has to be perfectly realistic you can just sort of take those artistic liberties and do enough for what you want to achieve. And for me, I just wanted to have a cute witch and her fun little boa constrictor familiar hanging out together. So it doesn't have to be overly realistic. I'm not even sure if the, the scale of the snake is correct either, but again, it's not important to dwell too heavily on those little details. Same with the pattern on the snake. I'm not even sure if that's quite right. I did my best to kind of mimic it the best as I could from what I saw. The interesting thing that I noticed when I was looking at the photos of these snakes is that kind of on their sides, like leading up to kind of their underbelly, there is um, a repeating kind of almost like an eye um, pattern that goes along the side, which I thought was really interesting. And so I did include that on the areas where you would see the, the side of the snake. But otherwise the, the rest of the pattern I found kind of more challenging to figure out. I find with animals like zebras or cheetahs, tigers, like those patterns I think are much simpler. Um, there was something about the shapes on the snakes, um, the boa constrictor, it's it's really particular, but I, I don't know if I fully captured it. But in any case, this is meant to be a kind of magical, mythical snake. So if it's not quite right, then that's okay. <laughs> anyway, enough of me rambling about the snake. Here you can see now I have moved on to the line art portion of the illustration, which is super satisfying. And so I went ahead and now I'm using pretty much the acrylic ink almost at full strength. So it's like not diluted with water or diluted with very, very little water. And that way it is as kind of strong and dark as possible to get the really sharp line art that I was looking for. And here I'm just using a super tiny paintbrush. I think this is two over zero is like the size on it. And I get a lot of questions about how I keep a steady hand or how I, you know, approach such clean line art. And while I definitely don't think my line art is perfect by any means, I honestly, I always just say that I'm holding the paintbrush really tightly. Um, I'm holding it with like an iron grip, which is kind of bad sometimes because I will actually start to feel kind of pains in my wrist and my arm. And so it's definitely important to take breaks if you are like me and you hold onto your utensil really, really tightly. Um, and the other thing too is I rest my hand on the surface and I find that helps keep my hand steady since um, its hand is resting on the paper or the table. Um, but that is kind of a 
There is a risk with that because there are definitely cases where I will accidentally smudge an area that's still wet with my hand being resting on the surface. So definitely be mindful of that when you're working through um, an illustration. It's probably best to work from one side to the other so that you're not running into that problem. And so to answer the question that I'm sure many of you are wondering, is acrylic inks easier to paint with than watercolors? The answer is, it depends. <laughs> I really do think that everyone has their own preferences and their own way of painting. Even within one medium, there isn't just one way to approach something. And I will say that obviously the techniques that I've shared in this video um, point to why I find there are a lot of benefits and easier uses with acrylic inks over watercolors. But I will say that because of the nature of acrylic inks and the techniques that I'm using here, it is a pretty unforgiving medium because it's permanent. So when there's, if you make a mistake, if something is really patchy in an area, you can't lift it up again like you can with watercolors. And so in that way, it is not easier. And another thing that I want to mention is that when the acrylic inks is beginning to dry in your palette, it starts to kind of create these little like plastic bits basically because it's an acrylic ink. And I find that to be kind of annoying when you're trying to work through an illustration when the ink starts to dry. Whereas with watercolor, when you just add more water to it and reactivate it, you're not gonna deal with all these little flecks of dried up ink. But that's a really small detail and the way that I combat that is just washing my palette throughout the illustration if I need to. And then here you can see I'm using the Fine Tech Gold ink, which is like a dried ink that I just add water to. This is not an acrylic ink. This is a water soluble metallic ink that I just love using to add little accents to the illustration. And I think it made for a really nice touch on this piece with um, the jewelry and the little details of the kind of stars around her. And then very lightly, I went in with a white colored pencil just to add in a tiny bit of like subtle highlights to her around her eyes and on the snake. And then the very satisfying moment of peeling back that tape, I ended up last minute deciding to paint the entire background with um, acrylic wash because I felt like something was missing. I didn't end up filming it unfortunately, but basically I just covered the entire background with a kind of taupey acrylic gouache. And I felt like that really made the piece feel much more finished. And with that, that concludes today's video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this illustration come to life. And I hope that my techniques with using acrylic inks was helpful for you. And I hope that you all have an amazing day or evening, wherever you're at. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.